There is a real lot of misinformation going on. Uh, we are prosecuting people uh, who are involved in people smuggling. Fear and horror are an appropriate response. There is no other reason to be given why you have not gone to hell since you have sat here. O oh, sinner, consider the fearful danger you are in. You hang by a slender thread with the flames of divine wrath flashing about it, ready every moment to singe it and burn it asunder, and you have no interest in any mediator and nothing to lay hold of save yourself. Nothing to keep off the flames of wrath, nothing of your own, nothing that you have ever done, nothing that you can do to induce God to spare you one moment. I think. Was it fun? Wow. No. All our freedoms are being eroded. Freedoms are being eroded, people. You gotta stand up. I agreed the fuck out of it. <laughs> I'm not interested in laughs. Enoch Powell's the only person who's got it right. Are you saying I agree with Enoch Powell? Agree with Enoch Powell. <laughs> I agreed the fuck out of it. Yes, somebody who was engaged in torture on behalf of the Taliban back in the 1990s, who came to this country, claimed asylum in 2006, he was rejected. Claimed asylum in 2010, he was rejected. But he's now been told he can stay. Because even though that same Taliban are in charge in Afghanistan, if he was sent back to Afghanistan, he himself, they say, might face the risk of torture. There is no response similar to that one. It stops halfway somewhere. It never reaches here. The theory of subversion goes all the way back 2,500 years ago. She worked hard and did well, paid off her mortgage and began to put something by for her old age. Then the immigrants moved in. With growing fear, she saw one house after another taken over. She is becoming afraid to go out. Windows are broken. She finds excreta pushed through her letterbox. Her name was actually Drusilla Cotterill and she lived in Brighton Place in Wolverhampton. It was only after Enoch Powell's death that the name of the woman came to light and some adults, uh, uh, you know, people of Jamaican origin, who had been children at the time, then admitted they had indeed teased the old woman in the street and that excreta was pushed through her letterbox. What can we say in retrospect about the Rivers of Blood speech? Powell claimed the most incendiary remarks were quotations from concerned constituents. But he knew how controversial the speech was going to be. Enoch Powell had the gift of prophetic utterance. He had the gift of language and of mind. Powell saw himself as a radical visionary, more in tune with the feelings of the masses than with his colleagues. Enoch Powell had the gift of prophetic utterance. He had the gift of language and of mind to make uh, prophetic statements from the mountain, which people listened to. Those whom the gods wish to destroy, they first make mad. He was somebody who took a point, elaborated it, and was led by it to its own implied conclusion. And as a philosopher, I admire that. That's the way one should think if one's interested in truth. It was a speech dealing with a highly controversial and sensitive issue. And the speech was being made uh, by a very intelligent, very intellectual, and very experienced senior politician within the Conservative Party. Well, I can already hear the chorus of execration. Powell was really only doing what any member of parliament might reasonably be expected to do. He was representing the views of his constituents and bringing them to the attention of the world. That's part of a good MP's job. The first human being who formulated the tactics of subversion was a Chinese philosopher by the name of Sun Tzu. To 2,500 years BC, he was an advisor for several imperial courts in, in ancient China. Those whom the gods wish to destroy, they first make mad. And he said, after long meditation, that 
to implement foreign uh, to implement state policy in a warlike manner it's the most counterproductive barbaric and inefficient to fight on a battlefield you know that war is continuation of state policy right so if you want successfully to implement your state policy and you start fighting this is the most idiotic way to do it the highest art of warfare is not to fight at all and under article 3 of the european convention on human rights, that would not be allowed, and we're still a signatory to that. You see, Brexit only went so far. We need Brexit 2.0. In my opinion, I think when people voted Brexit, they thought that actually foreign criminals and torturers would be more easily removed from this country. Well, sadly, they're not. But to subvert anything of value in the country of your enemy, until such time that the perception of reality of your enemy is screwed up to such an extent that he does not perceive you as an enemy and that your system, your civilization and your ambitions look to your enemy as an alternative, if not desirable, then at least feasible. Better red than dead. That's the ultimate purpose the final stage of subversion, after which you can simply take your enemy without a single shot being fired. I believe that at some point the mass of ordinary, normal and decent people will wake up and wonder what on earth they have done letting these criminals and rogues take over their nation. When that day dawns, I think there might be a reckoning for at least some of what has been done here if the subversion is successful. This is basically what subversion is. As you see, not a single mentioning of blowing up bridges. Of course, Sunset didn't know about blowing up bridges. Maybe there were not that many bridges at that time. <laughs> but the basics of subversion are, is being taught to every student. How dare I say such a horrible thing? How dare I stir up trouble and inflame feelings by repeating such a conversation? My answer is that I do not have the right not to do so. I want to know what you think. I want you to know what kind of people we are, what kind of government we be. What kind of country? Refreshment from start to finish. The finding of truth and freedom. If you want to change something, you have to be a part of something. You have to get involved, you have to educate yourself on it, and you have to make a change from inside. It's all good and well having an opinion saying no one listens, but if you're not there to be listened to, who's going to listen?